Welcome to Learning Python with Turtle Lesson 9. In this video, we're going to take what we learned about functions and make them more powerful by adding parameters. Parameters will allow us to generalize the process that it's, that's inside the function. So let's get to it. So we've seen that the turtle has many functions available to it. We're able to do a square, I mean a circle, by simply writing bob.circle. But other than that, it didn't have any other shapes that we can draw. Not to say that we can't draw a square or triangle, but it wasn't built into the uh, Python turtle library. So what we're able to do is we're able to create our own functions uh, to define the process for drawing a square, which again, with any polygon, is essentially running a for loop over the number of sides and then using the appropriate angle. Uh, in order to create the shapes. Okay, going through here, and we're going to do that. Just kind of show you um, what we've already accomplished. So very powerful. You know, we created a function for square, triangle, which does that, and then we can combine those to draw many different types of designs. The issue here, though, is like, let's say we wanted a pentagon. It seems kind of silly to create another function, though we could, that really just changes a certain part of the code. So it's a pent uh, pentagon, we'll say five, and then 72. Here. So one thing you'll notice about each of the functions is that they're essentially the same code. The only thing that changes is the range, which is rep represented by the number of sides, and the angle. Well, guess what? We've actually tackled this in a earlier video where we saw, and I'm going to write the process first. Uh, we saw that given the number of sides, let's say three, we can calculate the angle because the angle will simply be 360 divided by the number of sides. Uh, and then we could also create a variable called distance uh, to make it more flexible. And then we can do four times and range sides and then take that same process inside and then simply stick it there. We could change this to distance and this to angle. Again, this was the generic form of being able to draw any polygon uh, where we didn't have to change the code now. We simply changed this one variable and it then calculated uh, the angle and then ran the number of sides for the range so we get the proper number of forwards and left and then we use the angle down here for the left. So it'd be nice for us to be able to kind of generalize the process of creating a function by creating one function that does exactly this. So let's create a function called polygon. Now. If we notice the two key things in this process that can't be calculated is the number of sides and the hundred uh, and the distance. So what we can do here is we can add two variables to our function header, our function definition, which accepts the values. Now again, this is a new concept, so we're going to run through this slowly. Uh, we'll take this one out, and, and you'll see it. You'll see what I what I'm trying to allude to, but you'll also see this is something you've already been used to doing, realizing that a function might need additional information. So these are variables, but when they're used in this manner, they're also called parameters. Put it right here. function that accepts parameters. So two things that the polygon function needs now is the number of sides and the distance. Again, I'm not going to go over the process again because this is a process that we've seen already. So let's go back to our main program and let's see how we can use this. So we'll say polygon. Actually, let me run it just like this because again, this is how we ran the square and the triangle. You'll notice that it says missing two required positional, uh, positional arguments. Now, just to share with you, this is not something strange. You're used to this. Uh, if I was to do bob.forward, 
without a number inside, I would get a similar error where it says uh, the distance wasn't specified. Because at this point, you're already comfortable with the idea that if I'm going to tell Bob to go forward a certain amount, i got to give it a distance. Well, the same thing happens with polygon, except for the fact that this is something we created. So in order to use polygon the correct way, we need to give it the number of sides and a distance. So let's try that again. So let's draw a triangle. So for a triangle, we need a side of 3, and I'll keep this simple, we'll say 100. There we go. Now let's draw a square. Now hopefully you can kind of uh, deduce what the parameter should be for the polygon. Now again, it's a square, so it needs four sides. Honestly, the distance is up to us, whatever we want to do. And now we've essentially created one function that can handle drawing a triangle in a square, which means we don't need these functions, uh, the idea of the square and the triangle. And let's go one further with the pentagon. And let's do polygon. And a pentagon has five sides. So hopefully now you're starting to see, okay, you know what, this is very flexible. I don't have to... Remember the number of uh, the angle, the formula for the angle. I just got to specify how many sides to my polygon and a distance for it. I'm going to keep the distance the same, but we can actually, you know, let me switch it up. Let's say 20. <laughs> It'll be a small pentagon. And there you go. So you see the small pentagon right here. Again, for design purposes, I probably wouldn't make that 20 because it doesn't quite fit with everything else. Uh, everything else had a essentially a base of 100. So I'm going to do the Pentagon again with 100. All right. Now, the cool thing about this now, because we have a function that accepts uh, the number of sides, we could technically do this for times in range. And let's say, let's draw everything up until an octagon. And I'm going to use polygon inside of here. Now, if you recall, times will assume the values of 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 4. But it doesn't make sense for us to have a polygon anything less than 3. You need at least 3 sides to be able to draw a shape. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add 3 to my variable times. So that way, instead of doing 0, I'll do 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to uh, technically seven. So <laughs> let's let's up this up to uh, six, and we'll make this a little smaller so we can have enough room. And I'm just gonna get rid of these. Make this a little bigger. And I think we should have enough space on the screen. So there's our triangle, our square, our pentagon, our hexagon, our heptagon, and our octagon. And again, and now we can further combine this with. Um, I don't know. If, I don't know how, I'm not sure how it's gonna look, but let's <laughs> let's do a bob dot left here. Of there's six of them. We'll do sixty. Again, this is something you could just you know have fun with. You know, doing different shapes um, and just experimenting with moving the shapes around. All right, so let's go back to our presentation and let's review what we've done. So in this video, we saw how we can take a function and make it more flexible by adding parameters. Parameters are additional pieces of information that you have to provide the function. Again, this is something you've seen already. Uh, for instance, with the bob.forward, you have to provide it a distance or Python will yell at you. Uh, same thing with the dot left, uh, with the circle. Penup is an interesting one because it doesn't require additional information. But sim similar idea, if you were to give it additional information, it would yell at you. So in the function header, we can now specify additional information that can be used as part of the process. Again, with experience and with practice, you'll see how powerful it is to provide, to create a function that accepts parameters. So hopefully you're excited about using functions with parameters in your design and enjoy.